Hello and welcome to another Bold Englishman Let's Play. Today we're looking at yet another Doom Engine game and uh, this time we're looking at Hexen Beyond Heretic. Developed by Raven Software uh, and originally released in 1995, so a year after Heretic, Hexen continues the Heretic and Hexen storyline um, but largely, well basically it takes place uh, on another world with a whole new cast of characters and the only thing that really ties the two games together is the final boss which is the second in the trio of Serpent Riders. I believe originally this game was uh, developed as just an expansion pack to Heretic a bit like the later developed Shadow of the Serpent Riders expansion to Heretic but the developers ended up um, adding so many new features such as uh, new character classes, uh, hub level progression, loads of new enemies and so forth that it basically became its own game, hence Hexen Beyond Heretic. Uh, so with that being said, let's get straight into this. We've got three character classes to choose from. The fighter, which is geared primarily towards close, close range combat. Uh, the mage, which is geared towards ranged combat, and the cleric, which tries to mix the two of them together. Now, the last time that I played through Hexen, I used the mage, and that would normally be my character of choice, just because I like to have ranged weapons. But today I'm going to go for um, something that I don't usually do, and that's play through with the fighter. We're going to go with Berserker, which I assume is Hexen's ultra-violence equivalent difficulty level. And we start off in the Winnowing Hall. Now, for a game that has a hub level progression, um, basically that means that um, the episode is divided... Oh, by the way, this uh, grey tree you can punch through. I'm going to punch these guys from here as well, just so they can't get me. Um, yeah, the hub level progression basically means that the game is divided into five hubs, and... Um, each hub has kind of the hub level. Um, is there a guard? No, that's just torches. Um, yeah, each hub has the hub level, and then basically lots of different levels that you can access from it. Um, almost like the spokes of the hub, I guess. And actions and levers that you press in one level might have effects in other levels in the hub, so you can kind of transition freely between the levels, um, circumstances permitting. Breakable objects is another um, feature of Hexen, such as the urn and the windows here. Um, and poly objects, as in when we go up to this door, it opens three-dimensionally. Now the winnowing hall basically isn't part of a hub. Well, I guess technically it's part of the first hub, but once we leave this level, we can't ever come back to it. So this is kind of just Hexen's version of a tutorial level, really. There's not many uh, weapons in this game. There's four for each character class, and of course you begin with one of them. Um, flechette. The flechette is an interesting item in that um, each character class uses it differently. I don't generally tend to use for chets, I'll be honest, so I can't remember exactly what it does with the fighter. Nothing there. Nothing behind that. Ah. So the crystal vial and the quartz flask return from the heretic. So there are some things that kind of tie the game with heretic. But the way to progress is to go down here. So yeah, because of the um, limited number of weapons, it means that you don't... Basically, finding new weapons is uh, rare. I think for this first hub, for example, we only get access to the first two weapons. Okay, I can hide back here. Now this, these fists have quite a range, as you can see, I'm kind of standing quite far back from uh, these Etins. Greater range than the Doom Guys fists, for example. What do we have in here? 
quartz flask. Right. We have ourselves a key. Emerald key. You just run into this and run for as fast as you can. Get out of there. Got a trap here. There's nothing behind these uh, these walls. There's nothing there, just the same thing. That's uh, I guess a form of uh, scripting. Uh, ACS. I can't quite remember what ACS stands for. Something like action code scripting. Uh, that's another form of ACS. The fact that Etins, the most basic enemy of this game, constantly respawn. Well, not constantly, but every so often. And that's, I think, in pretty much every level. So there is no... Even though there is, like, a total enemy count, for the most part, Etins will be spawning again and again at the start of the level. So there is not a finite amount of enemies, strictly speaking. Now, as I said before, I have played through Hexen a couple of times. Need to get rid of that after it. Which kind of looks like the Gargoyle from Heretic. Take cover using the Etins. Yeah, so I've played through Hexen before a couple of times, so I do know what I'm doing. Hexen does get a lot of flack from uh, Doom players mainly because it is sometimes difficult to tell what you're actually supposed to be doing. Um, but hopefully we should avoid that issue by uh, prior knowledge. Just run through these. There we go. Silver key leads us into the bell tower. Quartz flask. Now we just got to go up and whack this. Now we go back to the beginning of the level. Right. right. One more enemy somewhere, but it's probably just like a lone Etin wandering around somewhere. I'll quickly get it crystal vial before we leave, may as well. And let's move on. This leads back out. Right, so into the first hub proper. Greetings, mortal. Are you ready to die? Korax himself. You get a me uh, greetings message, if you want to call it that, at the beginning of every episode. So this is Seven Portals, this hub. Episode hub, I use the words interchangeably. Get rid of these things. Come on, get over here. So in this case, some of the, ep the hubs, you don't actually start in the hub level. You have to progress to get to them. But here, no, we've just started in the hub level itself. Seven portals, as you can guess, means that there are seven different areas that we can visit. Some flechettes back here. Right, can we get these things? Yes, we can. Right, so from here, I've got a switch, which opens this up. And the green chaos serpent, which is, I guess, the same species of serpent that Desparrow rode, across, rode, rode upon, but maybe it's the fact this is a different planet and different like types of strength, but they definitely don't seem as threatening here as they do in Corvus's dimension. Is that... 
Yeah, quartz flasks. He's just lowered. We've also got something back here. And just a couple of enemies. Right. Two different types of mana, or ammo. Blue mana and green mana. The first new weapon we get uses blue mana. The second new weapon we get uses green mana. And the final weapon, which is in three pieces, uses both blue and green mana. Ethereal travel. So, Guardian of Ice. What have we got back here? That's another area. Okay. Not much in the way of secrets in this game. Ah, an axe, so our new weapon. Come get some. So, Timon's axe, as you can see, uses blue mana when it's charged up like this. But then you can still use this weapon even if you don't have it like any blue mana, it just it won't be quite as powerful. But that's not really a problem. I mean these these ends don't really pose much of a threat anyway. I think Hexen really achieves the like medieval atmosphere a bit better well medieval combat system I guess more than heretic. But that's just my opinion. So lots more for checks. Amulet of armor, so our armor's amulet of warding, sorry, armor's gone up by five, but it's a different armor type, hence different armor picture in the lower left hand corner. Wait for these pillars to do their thing, and we've got a step to here. So back in the seven portals, but this has opened up these two doors. As long as you pay attention to the audio and visual clues that the game provides you, then for the most part, Hexen's not too bad, like in the exploring department and where the hell have I got to be now department. But then, you know, I've watched some videos where people just really don't pick up on some sounds, so just pay attention, basically. I don't think it's much of a casual game to play. It definitely takes a lot more concentration than, say, like Doom, for example. Clear these out. Get some more ammo. Okay, let's go in here first. Guardian of Fire. Stand back. So yes, this scripting means that you get... Uh, I guess I kind of view scripting as like the special effects in uh, Doom Engine games. It just means that you can kind of get more fancy effects than, say, in Doom some proper armour here. Falcon shield. Well I say proper armour, it's only gone up to 39 but still. Smash your skull! So quite a lot of ends to cleave through. But as you can see, make short work of them. Okay. So we need the fire key for that. Inventory system is carried over from Heretic, of course. It's the same. Right. So here, I'm going to save game just so we have a save game file ready. Step forward, but then step back. Hmm, bye. Right. Now you could try and jump along here, but I'd recommend going back this way first. Because now this door is open. Get the switch. And we can just creep along the edge. Fire all the way down there. Grab the flame mask. I'm going to get out of here. Now we can hit this. 
One third of the puzzle has been solved. And the seven portals. Let them come towards me. Where are you? Any more? They're coming. A couple more. Come on. Any more in here? There we go. Right. I'm going to save here and try and collect these flechettes just because I'm that much of a completionist. Probably will fail a couple of times. Oh dear. <laughs> exactly like that. If this takes too long, then I'll just forget about it. Besides, they're only for chets. They don't exactly matter too much. Come on. Give it to me. Okay, for some reason, I just can't even collect that one. Oh, that's why, because I've actually got maximum flechettes. So, in that case, let's go back. There we go. Not too many jumping puzzles. Um, so, with the flame mask, I think that's pretty much all we can do here. So, we've got to just head back now. <coughs> Doesn't open, no. Basically, if there's nothing you can do in the particular level you're in, um, come back to the hub and have a little explore. Has there anything else been revealed? Answer looks like no. So I guess now we just got to go in here. To the Guardian of Steel! Steel and metal. We have a new enemy here. Centaurs. That can block with their shields, which are really quite annoying and slow the uh, pace of the game down considerably. But with the fighter, aren't too bad. If you were the mage, at this point, you probably only have the starting weapon, the crystal or sapphire wand, I think it's called, which does very little damage and pretty much is guaranteed to stun them every shot. So, fighting the centaurs as the mage at this point in the game is really quite a ball ache. But not too bad, fighter. More helpless melee creatures. Okay. Let's go back. Symmetrical map design is carried over from Heretic as well, so... bit dark in here. I'm all also tried um, recording my voice a little louder than usual, so I apologise if it distorts, but again I'm just trying to experiment, see what works best. So my voice has been quite quiet in previous Let's Plays. Right, that is a lift. You can't really see, but it is a different texture than the wall, but isn't activated at this point in time. So the fighter doesn't get access to a ranged weapon until, mm, I, well, certainly the next episode. I don't think we get it in this episode. So we are melee only for a while, in true warrior spirit. Nothing screams screw you than an axe to the face. Ooh, X-Death. Go down here. Kill this guy. Just because we can. Right, so now, 
let's try going down here. We can get through here. Got some stuff up here. Yeah, a single quartz flask. And some more armor. Mesh armor. There's another serpent in there. Okay. Um, <coughs> a third of the puzzle has been solved. On the seven portals. Right. More poly objects, which is the three-dimensional element of this game. Um, can't go down there yet. Um, they open up eventually, but at this point, I'm not sure if we can. I think we we just got to go back now.